There was only one note in that whole thing. One. All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rabir. I hope you're all very well. We're here for another Ask the Fro video. Hope you enjoyed the little, little bit of noodling that I've decided to start these videos with because it's a lot of fun. And that is a little thing I'm trying to work on for like another ambient thing uh, that I want to record. So if you like it, let me know in the comment section. But let's crack on with the questions. First question is from De James De Jefferson. He's called James Jefferson, but he's put a D in front because I'm assuming he likes the gent. Anyway, he says, any plans for a solo album in that style of dulcet thing or your other clean slash low gain ambient stuff? And then he says, edit, I just learned, I just listened to First Contact. I don't know how I missed it. Incredible stuff. Thank you very much to James. It's funny that you should ask, considering what I just said at the beginning of this video. That was not set up at all. But yeah, I, I do fully intend to do that. Um, I do have recordings of those songs, like the dulcet thing, chill down, um, now and then, those kind of things that I've done. And to be honest, what they are is me sitting down with a really nice ambient sound and just getting stuck in and trying to get better at that melodic style playing. And then I record it and then I think that sounds really cool, put it in a video and people really enjoy it. You guys really enjoy it and that really does mean a lot because it's the stuff in my guitar playing stuff that I really want to get better at and, and, and continue to grow at. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for that. And yeah, it's going it's going to be uh, a project I'll be working on. A little tiny thing for anyone who is watching this video, um, there will be some of those tracks on the next Grinding Gears EP, because uh, I'm going to try and do something a little bit different for that EP. So yeah, thank you for the question. Question from Jack Hayward, and he says, Hey Beer, how's the best way to get a following for a small band? It's a good question. Um, there are many ways to do it. One of them would be to gig a lot, gig all over the place if you can, try and get around the country if you can, and just get on bills with different different bands that are in a similar style. Um, it's really useful to have recorded music. It's really useful to have an EPK, which is an electronic press kit, um, showing you the numbers, like what kind of stuff you're into, some publicity shots, some photographs, all that kind of stuff. Um, don't try and overdo it, just try and be honest about what you've got and most importantly be a great live band and really nice people. Um, so when you're trying to get on those bills, you know, you just gotta be just gotta be a good person, just gotta be cool, you know? Like it's the thing with the music business or any business or industry, if I from whatever limited experience I have is it's about people. If you're if you're a people person and you can you know you can just get along with somebody, find common ground, have a good old chat, then it's more likely to turn into something else. Um, and that, that speaks volumes when it comes to being in a band. If you're out there as a small band trying to get more gigs, befriend other bands, like get chatting, go to other bands' gigs, speak to the, you know, the promoter will probably be there because it's their night, so try and find them. Don't just shove a CD in the face, just ask them, you know, like, how's the night going? You know, you really enjoyed the bands I've put on. Do they do a lot of bands like this? Do they do a lot of gigs like this? Do they run any other venues? Um, if you'd be interested, here's a CD, or if you'd be interested, we have a band, here's my card, it's got all the details on it. We'd love to, you know, get on a bill at some point, you know, open slot. Take whatever you can to start out with and then build it from there. Um, but yeah, that would be my advice to start off with, definitely. Next question is from Julius Kreuger and he says, Hey Rabir, surely it's kind of a trademark thing for you, but did you ever consider cutting your hair? Does it bother you in any way? Or in any case, how do you take care of it? Thanks for making these videos. I've Yeah, I definitely thought about cutting my hair. Um, I'll get John to put up a photo somewhere on screen of me with short hair. I used to have very, very short hair. I used to gel it, style it, all that kind of stuff. I was really, you know, people like doing that, and I did too. I used to love baseball caps and beanies. But since starting the band and playing guitar, just the guys were like, you need to grow, you can grow an afro, like, you should do that. And then I've just always had it, you know. Started growing it in 2006 or seven, and I haven't cut it since. I haven't even had a trim. It's stopped growing, you know, it's just stopped. I think hair has a natural growing length and mine's stopped, so. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think I'll, unless I start balding and it looks terrible, I'm sure you guys on YouTube will tell me that it's starting to look bad. I'll cut it off. I, I don't, I'm not precious about it. It's just whilst I can have an afro, I'll have one. 
Um, it doesn't bother me in any way. It's really easy to maintain. I just, if I wake up in the morning and it's flat on one side because I've been asleep, then I just pull it out and it's good to go. Um, I just, there's no special care to it. I have a shower, I use shampoo and conditioner like anyone else and it just, I use an afro comb or I have a, like a tangle teaser comb and that's literally it, you know. It's cool. I enjoy having it. Um, I don't think it's for everybody. Sometimes I get laughed at. Sometimes random women come up to me and grab my hair, which is kind of cool. But also if I'm with Hannah, she's like, the hell's going on? Um, but generally, it's cool. It's a talking point for sure. But yeah, it doesn't bother me. Uh, and it is kind of a trademark now. It wasn't intentional, but it's just the way the cookie crumbles. Next question is from Joe Brennan, and he says, Hey, Beer, love that you've brought the Q&A back. Thanks, man. He says, Can you do a little segment expanding on more of those pathways you use during your improv? I think a lot of guitar players get stuck in their own one or two pathways and begin to feel like their playing gets stale, and maybe seeing some other pathways um, from other players could help. Thanks. Um, great question, and uh, yeah, I would also add to that that I get stuck in those same pathways. They annoy me when I feel like I haven't done anything new for a while and I just keep doing the same things over and over again. Um, it is one of those things that uh, grates on you as a guitar player and I think all guitar players probably suffer from that a little bit. Unless you go through Govan, because I think or Matteo Sassato or Joey Lang, well there's plenty of players that probably don't, it doesn't bother them but they can just play whatever they want, however they feel, and it sounds great. Um, but for for the rest of us mere mortals, it does, it's something that starts to grate on you. So I'll show you one or two. Um, let me just turn down some of the reverb and delay, have a little sip of coffee. Um, that was a really Rob thing to do, but I actually realized it was getting cold, so. Okay, um, let's have a listen. Okay. Now, if I was doing a major one, I would be kind of going... So that was zero, two, four, then two on A and D, and then the same again, uh, four and six, and then four on G and five on B. And you can carry that on. That would be the major one, the minor one would be very similar except you flatten that third, so it'd be zero, two, three instead of four. Then two on B, uh, A and D. Then uh, four and five. And then four and G, five on B. And seven and eight on B. And then you could expand on that and then you could go uh, seven on E all the way up. Um, and I suppose that's a very basic uh, explanation of where my mind starts to think if I'm like in the middle of improvising and I'm trying to do something outside of pentatonic, I'll start messing around with those first. So I always do that. Yeah, that's basically what I'm doing there, and I'm just trying to figure out notes outside of it if I want it to sound a little bit more, uh, yeah, like the Phrygian dominant thing, whatever, you know, that's that kind of, uh, uh, that's the Phrygian dominant sound. Um, and then I guess other than that, I'm kind of just messing around with different n notes and trying to pull in different flavors. 
Yeah, so I mean, not to go into too much detail because there's other questions to get on with, but my that's a starting point. If you rewind the video and listen to the frets that I was talking about, start there and then see how you can branch out and do different things, modal, modal application or just add in chromaticism, pentatonic stuff. See how you can connect those different shapes that you might know with that in mind. Because you can do that from any key, you know, you could do that from, that's down in E for uh, major. You could do that from A. Uh, it really depends where you are, G. But yeah, so it works anywhere, really. Um, and it's also trying to work work out doing that on other strings. So you could do that on the, from the A string. It's just trying to work out those pathways. But let that be a little miniature lesson on how I would go about connecting things. And that's just one element of it. Um, but it works, it's fun. So, thanks for that question. Next question is from the Not So Guitar Guy. He says, Hey dude, something I hear in some of your spankiest strat playing comes across to me like some strong, like a strong John Frusciante influence. How do you feel about John Frusciante? Um, he's a great player, and obviously I love the Chili Peppers, especially the old school stuff like Blood Sugar Sex Magic, Californication. Uh, by the way, those are great albums for me. Um, I've never really invested a lot of time in, in John Frusciante as a guitar player uh, to learn from. Personally, just didn't do that. I know that he's a huge influence to many guitar players, Matt Hornby being one of them, uh, Andrew Groves from Arcane Roots being another, a couple of my friends um, back in the ACM days used to go on about him all the time. And I think he's, you know, obviously really good player, obviously very expressive. Um, I mean, very expressive, like when you see him play on stage when he does those really long sustained notes and he's just like, looks like he's about to cry. That's cool, if, you, if, they, if you're into that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean like, not saying anything bad about John Frusciante, just not personally one of my influences, although I do really like the Chili Peppers. So um, no, the spanky strap playing uh, influence is from Nuno, uh, Philip Sace, guys like that, that um, yeah, they just do it really well, you know, there's just so much going on, it's so rhythmical. So for me, that's where I get it from. Okay, so the next question is from Kerwin Death Wisp. It says, possible video idea, installing new pickups for the beginners who want to switch out or install new pups. I, <laughs> I, okay, I guess you could, but I wouldn't advise, if you're a beginner at wiring, I wouldn't advise it. Put it this way. I didn't know what I was doing and I've spent a long time getting it wrong before getting it right. And even then, when Pablo comes and opens up my guitars and has a look, he's like, what have you done in here? I mean, the guitar works and it sounds fine, but he's like, what is this? What have you done to your guitar? So I'm no, pro I'm no professional uh, pickup wiring guitar service dude, but I know how to wire a set of pickups now. Um, it's about experimentation. I mean, you just gotta try. And you can look it up online and get instructions and all that kind of stuff and watch videos. But until you actually try, hold a soldering iron and get the solder close and just get it all right, it's it's a different story. And that's not something I think you can teach in a video or anything. My advice is just get someone else to do it who knows what they're doing. Uh, but if you do want to get into that world, then it is, as I'm sure you probably know already, try and, uh, trial and error. Don't burn yourself, be safe but trial and error. If you were around in the 90s, you will remember that tune. Anybody that knows what that tune is, put it in the comment section below. Next question is from Gibek. He says, I've got two questions for you. Oh, cheeky with the two questions, but we'll do it, we'll do it. Says, why do you prefer Kemper over Axe Effects? In brackets, I'm assuming you prefer Kemper because you own one. Number two, do you want to visit more countries with Tosca this year? Greetings from Poland. Cheers, man. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience with an Axe Effects. Um, I just haven't, I just haven't, because you can't try them in shops because they sell direct, so you can't 
You can't just go to a shop and try one to see if you think it's good. Not me- None of my mates have them either. I know they sound good on for my friends. I know my mate Rocco uses one. If you don't know who Rocco Pezin is, you need to go and check him out. He's an incredible guitarist. Does all that kind of stuff. Scott Axe effects, all that kind of stuff. Check him out. Um, but, you know, and, and the periphery guys use them. Plenty of guys use them. Even, you know, Guthrie uses the Fractal and Tosin does. They sound great. I think they're a little more tinkery. They, you know, you have to really dial in the tones. I could be wrong. I haven't really ever used one but for me Kemper's great sounds like an amp at studio in the studio in, and the fact you can capture the sound like if I listen if I'm in the studio I've got the Kemper there and I'm there tracking like the Tosca album had I have had the Kemper I would have profiled the sounds that I got it's it's such a shame that I didn't think to do that but that's the beauty of Kemper on top of the fact that you know the profile packs out there you can get hold of the Michael Britt ones, Tone Junkie TV ones, even the ones I've done for Victory, I really like them. I think it feels like an amp. They're all great though, you know, the Helix, the Axe Effects, Kemper, they're all great. It's just what, what you choose to use. I just find that Kemper's easy, you know, it's got great reverb and delay in it. It's easy to dial it in, it's easy to find a sound and just crack on, and it's, it is what it is. Um, as far as Tosca playing outside of England more, yes, we. We have a booking agent, which um, we've had for a while. His name's Liam from Atonal. He's great, and he books lots of cool bands. Um, and he's working on uh, trying to arrange us getting to the US, uh, as well as further afield in Europe, and hopefully places like Australia and Asia and places like that. So there'll be more about that in the coming months. But yeah, uh, we, we definitely want to play further afield. It's a balancing act because you know, bands like Tosca aren't going to earn loads of money to sustain us all to eat and pay rent. You know, bands like Tosca is for the pure love and enjoyment of it. Um, so we have other things that we do, like me doing YouTube demos and videos and working with Chapman Guitars and Victory. Dave works for Chapman Guitars. Ben has music and we all have stuff outside that we need to earn money to pay rent and stuff. Um, so if we're going to go on a big long tour somewhere like the US, you want to do it in one hit. You're talking like a month minimum, so you can cover as much ground as possible. It's a lot of preparation, as I'm sure you've, you've heard from guys like Periphery. It's an expensive endeavor. He's talked about it. You know, touring is not a massively profitable thing, but it's not for you know. I don't think for anybody it's necessarily about the profit, but you do have to take that into consideration if you're going to go and take weeks away from your day job to to do it. So. But we are going to do it and fully intend on it. So watch this space. Last question from Alex Boylan says, hi, beer. Hello. Incredible playing as always. Thank you very much. Uh, It says, how comfortable are you when it comes to playing bass? I often hear it in your videos and you really seem to have your own style. Unlike a lot of guitarists who play bass. Cheers. Um, Thank you very much. I play bass for function. I do enjoy playing bass. I did play bass in a band called Scraps Latin with Dave, Matt Hornby and Rory McLean and we and I really enjoyed it. I love playing bass with a drummer so I can just hold a groove down and I really appreciate the bass. It's such an important part of, of a band and an instrument uh, and a mix um, and I love bass tone but I, you know, I'm a guitar player. When it comes to playing bass, I, I play bass for the song. I love writing bass parts. Um, I don't play a lot but you know, I like playing, and I and I choose to play with my fingers as much as I can. And when I'm playing a bass, I try and think about playing in the way a bass should be played. Don't I try not to play it like a guitarist on a bass. I don't think that's helpful. So when I'm recording my tunes, that you hear all the grinding gears stuff, anything like that that I've done for a demo, that's me playing bass. And I'm laying down bass lines as I'd expect to hear them. Like, um, that's just the way I think about it. And it's really helpful with Tosca because I can contribute to Dave, Dave's parts, give him ideas, give him suggestions. And obviously D- Dave's a phenomenal bass player. Um, so it's really easy for that reason that we can, we can adapt ideas together. Or if, for example, I've come up with a riff or a chord progression and I'm already hearing what's going on on the bass, I can just say, Dave, it's this thing. And then he'll just take it and interpret it. And that's same for drums with Tosca. It's just kind of how it works. Um, but yeah, I like playing bass. I I don't think I'll ever invest. I don't think I'll ever become a bass player for like for a band or anything. Um, 
but I definitely enjoy playing and I really enjoy recording bass and writing bass and putting it in tracks. Cool. So there you go. There's another Ask the Fro q and I am enjoying doing these. I hope you guys enjoy watching them. Uh, if you've got more questions, put them in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to answer them. And until next time, I've been Rabir and I'll see you all very soon. Thank mm -hmm. you.